Hey, what is up guys? This is Eric D. Red here. Has people ask me about how I do my eyes on my Matt Meyer Max Axolotl, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do that. What I've got right here is the Matt Meyer Axolotl Redux head already loaded in. It's uh, currently set as pink, and the first thing we're going to do to do eyes the way I do it is change the whole thing to the same color as our eyes. So to do that, I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard, and that changes our filament selection over here. You can also click on that a few times and I click the drop down, it's faster to hit the keyboard. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and paint it. And we're going to paint the entire thing pink. And to do that, we're going to change our height range all the way to maximum with the height range tool. And start from the very top, we're just going to go down. And this makes sure we don't get any random uh, triangles that are still black on layer 45, uh, not speaking from experience or anything. The next thing we're going to do is take our fill tool. We're not even going to change the color for this, because what we're going to do is we're going to go to our eyes, hold down Shift, and then click. That actually erases the painting from the area we've selected. And the reason we're doing that is because, you see, I haven't painted any eye shine yet. And what we're going to do is add a modifier. We're going to add a cylinder as a modifier. First thing we're going to do with that is change its color to our white. So it is now white in our object selection. Change our scale, make that 2 by 2 by 10. We're not doing uniform scale with that. And the next thing is we're going to move it. And it's not quite where it needs to be yet, so we need to raise it up a little higher. And the first thing I'm going to show you here is what happens when we slice it like this. When you have a modifier that has a color set to it, uh, intersecting with an unpainted region of your model, it will actually paint the model where it intersects in that color. And that's great, except we don't want this rod of white uh, poking through like that. And I'll show you how we're going to fix that in a little bit. Positioning-wise, I think I want to move that in a little bit closer towards the center. So we're just going to do that real quick. I'm going to move that 0.26. That's about good right there. Next thing is we're going to copy it and paste it and move that one over here. We're going to change that scale to 1 by 1 and put that more or less where we think it's going to look good. I think right here should be just about perfect. Copy both of them. Paste them again. And now we're going to move them over here. Once again, just getting them where we think is going to look good. And I think that would be a good spot right there. Slice it again just to verify our positioning. What we're looking for is just having them right around where the uh, top central dot is going to be. Yeah, so I think we need to move these over just a little bit to the left, or to my right. I'll probably be good right there. Okay, so we have the positioning on this one right, we just need the angle changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and paste it again. And the reason I'm doing that is going to be apparent in just a second. I'm going to change your angle. I'm going to take maybe 45 degrees that way, 45 degrees that way. And you see it's no longer intersecting where we want it now. That's why we copied that uh, to kind of give us a position finder. So now we're going to get in there and raise that up again, it looks like. Doesn't matter how deep it's going in, what we're looking for is just getting it in the right spot. So now we have it again. All right. Now we got it cooperating. Get that position so it lines up with that. Find our original rod. Delete that one. Slice it again. And we should have four pretty much perfect circles for our eye shine. There's one last thing I'm going to show you after this. So stick around. Yep. So you see we have the seam going down like that. I just think that's ugly. But it hides really well inside the mouth, so we don't want to take that away. 
I see some people paint all the way up to the lip and I just don't like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our scene painting tool, look at it straight down. We're gonna adjust our section view until the mouth is just about gone. Take our brush, make it sure it's a cylinder, make it, or the sphere, make it as small as possible. Get a good angle and just draw our seam straight up there. And when we get rid of the section view, see it doesn't interfere with where the seam will hide inside the mouth. When we slice it again, we get the best of both worlds. The seam goes up the chin and still gets hidden inside the mouth. So yeah, that should take care of it. Have a good one.